Come along for a quick ride because I found some new trails. These are hard packed, easy to ride. There are a few routes, but it's not so bad that I couldn't ride just about anything mountain bike related here. Except of course, when the trails themselves disappear. Don't worry though, they run on both sides of this road and if you keep riding long enough, 100, maybe 200 yards, they'll pick back up again. So where is here? I'm at David Crockett State Park in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, just about 40 miles from where I live. What brings me to David Crockett State Park, not Davy Crockett State Park, that's a different park, different state, but at this particular park, I'm here for Dad's shakedown maiden voyage in his RV. It's been a long time coming and a lot of anticipation and work to get to this point, but oh, pause. That bike at the corner of his RV, you can't see just yet, but it's upcoming, so stay tuned because it is a lot of fun. You can, however, look at that wolf pup RV behind my blueberry, that's my sister's, her first maiden voyage too. Follow-up videos coming on both those RVs. Preliminary results of the RV life, I think they're all happy. What about me and RV life? Oh, I'm 100% in. I just don't have the budget lined up yet or a sponsor. A not so subtle hint here. For now, I can still leech off dad's RV high and find some new trails along the way. Like these, which start right outside the campground where we were camped at and go on both sides of the road for quite a few miles. Most of them flat, but I did notice there were some downhill sections. Meaning that for what I'm riding, I slightly overbought. My ride today, the Mongoose Salvo Pro. I've fully reviewed and shown this bike on my channel before, but if you're not familiar with the Salvo Pro, it's not a big box bike. Mongoose still has premium bikes that they sell, the Salvo, an older model of those. You can tell by looking at it though that its components, they're a step above. I'll put a link down in the description to the two previous videos that I've made on the Salvo Pro. So this won't be a re-review, but I will give a quick recap of what this bike features. Just know that long before there was a Mongoose Ledge X1 or a Ledge X2 or any of the new Schwinns that had a tapered head tube, there was this Mongoose Salvo Pro with a tapered head tube. And a very not big box bike fork. This is an air fork with 120 millimeters of travel. A Manitou Marvel Pro, and you think of Marvel, I think of Thor. Well, how about Thor's hammer? And Salvo Pro, Marvel Pro, maybe there's a double theme. This fork though, it has a through axle. Definitely something we haven't seen on big box bikes. We also don't regularly see brand name tires like this. Schwalbe Racing Ralphs from the factory. Along with the tires being tubeless ready, so are the rims. Sun Ringlay Helix model. And this quality frame, this is local bike shop quality. Now the graphical choice is probably not to everyone's liking, but I do like the Kev Central orange accents. The bike has 120 millimeters of travel up front. We get 120 at the back too. Interesting because this 27.5 bike, 120, the 29er version, only 100. This rear air shock, a Manitou Radium Expert. Mongoose Pro Level bikes get beefed up suspensions with these stainless pivot pins and sealed bearings, though now we have a couple of years later, the Mongoose Lead Series not far off from this. Just look at the symmetry of everything here. A rear support arch that matches the fork's rear facing arch. If you're not familiar with these forks, they're designed to have the arch backwards, so the fork itself, it's not backwards. That's the way it's supposed to be. And with that fork and the rear shock, that's a combined 240 millimeters of suspension travel. One of the interesting quirks of higher end bikes is that you get to bring your own pedals, so why not choose a color matching theme? Those connect to the Salvo Pro's 2x drivetrain, Shimano Holotech with an external bearing bottom bracket. And when I say 2x, I mean that this has two chain rings up front, a 34 and a 24 tooth. Those will need a derailleur to shift through, and that job goes to a Shimano SLX front derailleur. At the rear, yet another step up. The rear derailleur, a Shimano Deore XT. The XT, known for seamless, fast shifts, also has a clutch to keep chain slap basically non-existent. Rear gearing, an 11-speed, 11-40 tooth cassette. You probably saw the hydraulic brakes up at the bars. Well, they're not entry-level Shimano hydraulics. And the Shimano rotors, they're paired with 180 millimeters at the back, 180 millimeter up front. So many good components that make up the Salvo Pro, though there is one arguable downside. Even though the design is a few years old, some could point to the fact that for $1,500 to $2,000, which is what it cost back then, the 135 rear spacing and a rear quick release, not a problem for me, but I'll let you debate that amongst yourselves. One other tell that this isn't a big box bike, two years before there was an ALX, a sized frame on a mongoose. And this medium aluminum frame with its asymmetrical chain stays is an 18 inch frame. 
weight for the entire bike, 32 pounds even. And there you have it. That's the bike that I brought. My reasoning why I brought this was number one, it was the easiest to access. And also, I didn't know what these trails were going to be like, and it's better to overbike than under. Remember a couple of years ago when I took a trek to South Carolina only to discover that the tires that I'd put on it were the absolute worst for the conditions of the trail? Not today. And these trails range from wide and smooth to not so wide but still mostly smooth, though there are enough spare routes to make me glad I was on a full suspension bike. Especially important knowing I had a complete evening of campground fun ahead, no reason to be trail fatigued. This ride, more of a scouting excursion. I plan to come back here possibly with some e-bikes because there are, well, look how high up I am. I think there are trails that go all the way down to the bottom of this. The sections that I did ride, lots of fun, lots of fast sections, though an equal amount of steep, quick climbs. The only real downside that I find with these trails and why you see a lot of hodgepodge quick cuts is because there are a lot of walkers and lots of kids. And the kids especially tend to cluster right at the speediest parts of the trails, meaning it ruins my chance to get a good run at a hill, but I'm playing it safe. Apparently, these free-range kids can be as dangerous as the wildlife. And that is a legitimate sign, not Photoshop. All kidding aside, these trails, they are fun, and as I've said earlier, I'm definitely going to be coming back. There are many more trails than the snippets you've seen here, lots more exploring to do. I skipped anything that looked like it involved a hard climb, and also took off without water, which I tend to do way too often, I need to work on that, but even on the easiest sections that I did ride, I was thirsting heavily when I made it back to the RV. Repause, remember you can't see that bike yet, though I can't wait to show it to you, so stay tuned. Instead, cast your eyes on the RVs, which I'll also be covering in upcoming videos. As far as this Mongoose Salvo Pro, I still enjoy it and I want you to share your opinions on it. And have you been a Kev Central viewer long enough to know that I had it and that these bikes exist, these premium Mongoose bikes? Comment below, give this video a thumbs up, I hope you're subscribed and you have that notification bell active. Thank you for watching Kev Central and have a great day.